So welcome to the uh, NetOps console server product demo. Uh, so what, I was, um, what I'm gonna show you today is basically um, as part of the introduction of our new NetOps console server products, I'll give you a quick tour of the new UI. I might show off that console auto discovery feature um, and then show you a couple of cool things you can do um, using Docker. So one is running Wireshark directly on your, um, your out-of-band console server. Um, and also um, being able to reach interfaces that aren't just consoles. So in this, in this instance, I'll, I'll get to an HB ILO um, that might be running some virtual uh, network functions um, uh, uh, directly from Lighthouse. And this is basically what you see when you log into the, uh, the NetOps console server. Um, really, we've kind of um, built this um, very similarly to Lighthouse. Um, when, you, when you land and when you log into the web UI, basically it says like, where do you wanna go? What do you wanna manage? So you can start typing it in. In this case, it's not super useful because I've um, not actually labeled any of my ports. Well, luckily I've got the auto discovery to the rescue. So let me just go configure serial ports and I can literally just check port two, which I know something's connected to and click detected in the interest of time. Yes, yes, I wanna go ahead and do it. And basically that'll go out and probe the port. So we support, um, you know, Cisco, Juniper, Arista, um, probably a bunch of other vendors um, that kind of have the same look and feel of their, their CLIs. It doesn't need credentials, it actually discovers it from a pre-login state. So it doesn't actually need to know a bunch of secret credentials to go in and log in to, to discover the, um, the console port label. And here it is running here. Um, and that'll actually take a moment or two. So maybe I can uh, jump over to a uh, still running. Maybe I can just show you while I'm waiting. Um, we've got this configurable uh, VLAN switch now. So effectively, uh, all the switch ports, this is a um, uh, OM12088EL. So it's got eight switch ports um, and they can be configured and grouped into these aggregate interfaces. So here I've just grouped them all into one. This is the out of the box state, um, bridged them into one aggregate interface. Um, so give that a, a little while to, to complete. Uh, you can actually see that it's, this is, I'm actually tailing the port log so I can see what's going on in the background. So I know when my demo is done and yes, it's done. So as you can see, that's now updated. So it's discovered that the, uh, the host name is indeed hostname one.final.foobar.com, um, which is just a, a quick um, host name that I came up with as part of my, a part of some, some Ansible or provisioning stuff that I was testing. And um, yeah, as you can see, I've actually logged in through the web terminal that's built in uh, to the, the OM, uh, sorry, to the NetOps console server's interface. And you can see that is indeed the, the host name that is discovered there. So yeah, it's a pretty nifty feature um, and, a, and a bit of a time saver. Um, so that's basically probably all I'm gonna get to um, in terms of the new UI. As you can see, it is pretty nice. It's got dark mode, or if, if you wanna be in blinded mode, you can do that too, but we'll go back to dark mode there. Um, and um, next, I actually, yeah, um, I've got some more CLI, a bit of a CLI centric demo here. Um, so I wanted to show off um, the kind of things you can do with Docker that are kind of cool and, and um, useful, I guess, uh, above all else. Um, and I don't know about you, but whenever I'm, I'm troubleshooting a remote network problem, I find myself more often than not, I guess, being from a more of a Linux background, running TCP dump. Um, and I, but, but the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a visual person. So more often than not, you know, I'll see all the kind of, you know, the lines go by on the CLI, but but I'll actually, what I do typically do is I'll write it out to a PCAP file, tcp -W, blah, 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 PCAP, and I'll copy it back to my MacBook and then I'll load it up in Wireshark so I can see what's going on um, kind of and you know, make sense of all, all this uh, network traffic. Not really being a network engineer, I can't see into the matrix maybe as well as, as, uh, as you can. Um, so um, what I thought, would, wouldn't it be nice if you could run Wireshark directly on your console server and visualize the network in real time you know, directly natively on that remote ne network segment. Um, so what I've done here is this red terminal up the top here um, is the, um, the CLI, um, the SSH CLI for that same um, OM that I was um, logged into, the NetOps console server that I was logged into here. And I've just come up with a little Docker file here. And literally all this is doing is um, pulling in a stock Ubuntu uh, 2004 LTS uh, image, um, it's installing this XPRA um, package, which is kind of a, a nice X11 um, based um, uh, remote desktop type thing. 
um, and it's running it in, in the container. So, you know, a really straightforward kind of um, container there. So if I, and I've just got, yeah, so I've just got basically a, a little script here that, that um, builds the container and runs it. And with any luck, I've actually, uh, I, I built it and ran it, um, you know, earlier today. So it's all kind of cached. So it should go pretty quickly in terms of the build. If you're building the entire container from scratch, um, then, or the entire image, I should say, from scratch, then it will take a minute or two. Um, but in this case, I've already cached it. Um, and I probably have to think of a couple more things to say while I'm waiting for, to see XPRA is ready. Uh, and these kind of demos, you just have to kind of chat and talk until they are ready. Uh, and there you go, it's come up and it's ready. So XBRA is ready. So my service is running. I'm, I'm running this remote Ubuntu environment now um, with Wireshark embedded as well. I, um, so uh, now what you can actually do is browse directly to your console server and XBRA has this nice WebSockets HTML5 interface. So now I've actually got a full um, Ubuntu, well actually Zubuntu is XFCE um, uh, desktop environment running inside my console server that's running Wireshark. So now I can go to this bridge interface that I showed you before in the VLAN and I can start capturing and I can see everything that's happening on my remote network. Um, that's pretty cool, I thought. But actually, I've got an X11 server in my MacBook um, exports, which is part of the Xcode. Um, so I can actually run a native client. Um, and I've um, actually run a little, written a little script here that will SSH in and redirect through Lighthouse. So all I've got is access to Lighthouse. And um, I can run this native client. And that will export that um, Wireshark session all the way from my NetOps console server over the Lighthouse VPN directly to a native window running on my Mac, which I thought was um, kind of nifty. So now I, you know, I'm literally I could be two hops away and maybe a couple of disconnected circuits away from the network I'm trying to troubleshoot, and I can literally run a a, um, a packet a packet sniffer um, as if I was physically plugged into that network. Is that I'm not sure how. What technology is used for that? Like, could these captures be sent to a network visibility fabric, like a, uh, you know, a capture engine, um, like Gigamon or an Ixia, you know, network visibility fabric? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. So I'll actually show you uh, another part of the demo and I'm, I'm kind of running a little low on time here. So I'll just, I'll just show you um, something else that we've done that actually might, um, might answer that question a little bit better. Um, so jumping back to my slide deck, um, and so what we're finding is uh, the management consoles of these remote devices um, that were under management by our system are increasingly ethernet based. So uh, there might be um, you know, an HP, a, a white box server or an HBox, uh, HP server running a VM instead of your traditional network appliance. Um, so what the new problem, I guess then, is like how does your, how does your, um, as your keyboard cat actually reach these Ethernet-based management um, consoles from their their home or their hotel room, and without doing any kind of fiddly routing, or you know, when they're, 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 the network might be physically kind of disconnected. Um, so we already know that the OM um, that the NetOps console server can re-establish that a comms back into Lighthouse, and we have the ability to run Docker containers. So what we can actually do is do some magic, some VPN magic, run another VPN server on Lighthouse, let our keyboard cat. Uh, VPN into Lighthouse, and then actually bridge them over all the way into that remote network segment um, using a GRE bridge over that um, over that VPN. Um, so this is the interface of Lighthouse. Really, we've created a really simple to configure VPN server. So it's literally as simple as generating a certificate. So now I'm logged into Lighthouse, our um, our central management system, and I've created a certificate, um, and I can export that as an open VPN config. Um, in the interest of time, I've already done that and I've already loaded into my OpenVPN client of choice, um, which is um, uh, TunnelBlick. And I can literally just connect in VPN into Lighthouse using OpenVPN. Uh, and when I log in, it's going to ask me for credentials. Um, so it's secured by certificate, but also when I log in, um, I'm going to log in with my, my Lighthouse credentials. And similarly, when you're, like when you're reaching a console port, you put in your username, colon, and then the console port label. You can put in your username, colon, than the remote network, um, the, the remote uh, Net, NetOps console server that you're trying to reach. So in this case, mine's called Hedgehog. So I'm going, logging in as Robert W at Hedgehog. And that's going to take a moment or two to connect. 
and it's doing the rainbow bridge stuff all in the background. It's all happening with the magic of Docker and all sorts of other things. And now I can actually log into my HP ILO and type in my credentials here, my long and convoluted password, which I hopefully get right. Fingers crossed. And so now I'm logged in via Lighthouse just by only having access to Lighthouse, I can actually reach any IP management endpoint. Um, so you, it's providing full IP connectivity. Um, I just have to say, yes, please, please pwn me. And I can actually launch a visual um, console and I can access the, um, the GUI of my server effectively using my out-of-band management infrastructure completely independent of my production network. And as you can see, that's all actually being dumped in real time. You can see me accessing this, uh, this service um, directly uh, through the, the NetOps console server and, and, and via Lighthouse. So, so, so I guess, yeah, they, these are some of the kind of cool things that you can do um, with, with a resilience, um, uh, uh, network resilience uh, platform. This is why we're, we're saying it is a lot more than, than just out of band, a lot, lot more than just consoles. Um, it's it's a, a, about extending the reach of, of management tools, of different protocols, not just your CLI, and making that um, uh, really simple to do and really easy to use, I guess.